And and even when you have those bad days, because a lot of people watching right now, like they're going to have those bad days, man. They're going to have bad days all the time. As a new agent, first six weeks, a lot more bad days than you're going to have now, right? Yeah. But how, when you have those bad days, like what do you do? What what do you say? What, what How do you bounce back? How do you keep pushing? Or are you just so far along now that you're like, dude, I'm, I'm – just I'm on the way and I, that's never stopping, you know, like what, what, what happens? Cause it, cause we all have bad days. Yeah. We, and we're we're going to continue to, I'm going to continue to. Yes. I think, um, there, there's a few things that I do when I have a, a, a really horrible day where I was like, man, this was, why is this happening to me? <laughs> like did, did they not know that, that nobody sent them out the memo that I did $1.6 million before I came to their house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No. Come on now. <laughs> but you know, I think it's it's reflecting on it there again at the end of that day. I think where a lot of agents go wrong is they 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 reflect appointment to appointment, and that's where you can mess yourself up. Mm. Because I'm thinking about all this negative and all this 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 guy that didn't buy from me and how he was a jerk and how he kicked right. me out of his house and I'm thinking about all this stuff and guess what I'm feeding my mind, feeding all that negativity right back to myself. So when I show up to the next client. What kind of face are that do I have? They ain't gonna see a game face. They're gonna see that 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 face of defeat, right? Yes. They're gonna see it all written over me. And so That's right. make it through the day, reflect, do all the cussing and yelling and screaming. I do a little bit of that too. <laughs> punching the steering wheel. Punch, punch the steering all wheel at the end of the day. There you go. Right? At the end of the day. Get it out because you don't want to wake back up. It's like they always say don't go don't go to, to if you're married, don't go to bed mad at each other. Yeah. Right? Don't go to bed mad at yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know? There you go. Don't go to bed mad at yourself. It's not it's not a it's not a good habit, first off. But second mm-hmm. off, when you wake up in the morning, you're not gonna feel any bit any better because you were mad at yourself tonight. Right. And so get that bury that stuff. But then it's it's who, who am I talking to? I'll tell you what I do because I'm, I'm really competitive by nature I feel is like. I want to call somebody who I know won this week, somebody who I know kicks some butt this week. Yes. And so I've got some good friends in this business um, that I'll get on the phone with and I'll say, man, my day sucked. And they'll go, man, I did $20,000 today. Mm. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. And, and that is enough for me a lot of times to, to spark that, that, that fire within me to go, you know what? Today's over. Tomorrow's going to be different. I'm going to crank it up. But I, if I went to bed knowing that I did every bit, every ounce of what I could to get my production, to get my numbers, hey, I can't be mad at me. Right now, I've got to realize that sometimes, sometimes the streets just owe me. Right, and other yes. times I owe the streets. I look at it like uh, when we were selling food. I, I used to say the money is in the bottom of the freezer. Right? If you, well, what if I if I told you that that at the end of your day, you know, somewhere in your freezer that there's six hundred bucks, all you got to do is get to the bottom of it. Mm. How fast could you get to the bottom of it? It's the same way with leads. I feel like if I if I know for sure I bought. X amount of dollars in leads, I feel like there's fifteen thousand dollars in that stack of leads. If I could tell myself that there's fifteen thousand dollars in that stack of leads, how quick can I turn them over? Yeah. And so now it's just getting back to the phone. Now it's just going out and knocking some doors because I know I'm gonna have some of those days where it just sucks, right? I'm gonna have some appointments, yeah. one, two, three, back to back. Sometimes that just suck. But if I got enough of them, I'm not worried about my production. Right. What's the best? What's the best day you ever had? Best day, single day I've ever had was about 20, I think it was $23,000. That's a good day. In in personal production. That's really a good, good day, day, bro. Really. Tell me about day. that day. That, <laughs> I can't forget that day. Yeah. So I had, uh, doing some some mortgage protection, and, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm pitching this guy, actually, and uh, we're talking through some options, and we're talking about, you know, term, and we're talking about return of premium, and and we go into talking about, you know, some of the other things that we could kind of help him with. And he pulls out this policy, and it's a it's a prudential policy or something like that, and it's going to expire. Mm. And I think he's, he had like two months or three months left on it. Wow. Two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar policy that he had since he was way young, and we were looking at. Get this, we were looking at a $200 a month mortgage protection policy before he pulled this policy out. $200 a month. And then he realized 
I spent all this money over 25 or 28 years, however long it had been before that he had that first $250,000 policy with, with Prudential. So I spent all this friggin' money, and I get nothing out of it. It's just going to cancel, and it's going to go up. It's like, I don't want one of those kind of policies. What kind of policy is that? As so I showed him the mortgage protection, he's like, is that going to cancel on me? Mm. And, and 25, like, is that going to have a term on it? It's like, yeah, it's, it ends in 20 years. I don't want that kind of policy. Right. And so we, we started looking at permanent options. What I learned from that one conversation is don't don't, don't shop with your own wallet. Right? That's right. And you don't you can't walk into deals and think, hey, I would never spend that kind of money. So I know they wouldn't because we ended up writing um, in a big old IUL. It was twelve, thirteen hundred dollars a month on his. And then we did a, a three hundred dollar a month one on his wife on something that was going to be a two hundred dollar a month deal. Mm. <laughs> Were you beating yourself up that you even showed the two hundred dollars before then, or were you like, yeah, a yeah. little bit? I'm like, man, because well, I I know that he had closed on it. He was already we were ready to do wow. the application on it before we, he said I, I don't want to do a policy like that. And so I'm like, man, thinking I knew this was going to happen. I'm going to walk out of here with no business <laughs> and two hundred dollar a month mortgage protection. So it's great. <laughs> right. It's good. Right, right, right. Until it's really he goes, good. Until he says. I don't want that kind of policy that ends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, crap, I thought we had this. I thought we had this. And, but we, we ended up making it work. And then I went to that right after one, did a, a couple other little mortgage protection deals, ended up doing a $23,000 day that day. Boom. Plenty of days with a dozen appointments and nothing, and then a $23,000 day. Yeah. That's what's the thing about this business is, dude, you never know what's going to happen that day, who you're going to walk into, I almost didn't go to an appointment on a Saturday and then wrote a $505 a month final expense policy. You know what I mean? Like I almost didn't drive to Jeff, Jeff city for an appointment and wrote a thousand dollar a month policy. Like there's just, you know what I mean? There's those days Man. where you're like, I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to go. I don't want to do this. Or you, you, you start thinking negative. Right. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why you probably start with some gratitude in the morning is, is it's puts you in a positive frame of mind. Absolutely. And you're one of the most humble people I know to write. A quarter mil your first six months. 1.2 million in 18 months. Like, like you know, the, the numbers, the pure numbers that you're talking about are freaking insane. And to be as humble as you are, it's super, super impressive, man. It's really awesome. Man, I appreciate that. Where's it always, where does that come from? Because it, it hasn't, I've known you for, you know, a l- little bit now and it hasn't changed. And you keep getting better, <laughs> but you, but you're like, you know, you're mis, you're Mr. Consistency. You're Mr. Reliable. You're even kill. You're there. You know, you know, I, um, I, I've got, some, got some really good mentors, some really good examples of what success looks like. The reason why I came into this business was, was because, you know, I was, I was knocking in this big fancy neighborhood mm. and I knocked on the right door, you <laughs> know, and all the, all their neighbors were and calling cops on me and telling me, hey, I don't eat stuff off the back of a truck. And <laughs> and here's this dude in this big, you know, 6,000, 7,000 square foot home, mm. several 20, 30 acres. Him and his family also own a ranch out there. And he doesn't eat steaks. <sighs> He's got cows. Yeah. They've got like 18 chicken houses. Right. And I sell him steaks and chicken. But what 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 attracted me to him? was his personality. Mm. It was the fact that not only was he at home at two o'clock on a Tuesday, but he was the nicest person in his neighborhood. Wow. He he seemed like a person that had, had truly been working on himself. And so what, what made me call him, he didn't try to recruit me right then. He, he gave me his card and he said, call me when you get back into town, I'll buy some more from you. Wow. And I called him and said, what's Symmetry Financial Group? I want to do what you do for a living. A yep. guy that's at home at two o'clock on a Tuesday with his toddler crawling around and the most down to earth, humble person I know. And so I, I realized if I wanted to, to have his kind of results, I needed to, to imitate what he was doing, mm. you know, and he works on himself tremendously. I needed to work on myself tremendously. Don't get me wrong. I've, I've got probably one of the biggest egos I know, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's I've learned how to be mature in that and understand, accept the fact that it's uh, I've got that issue and I, I, I really try to work, work on it. Okay. Try, try hard to work on it. I can understand and appreciate that for sure. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. 
See you in there. Hey, I'm Cody Askins, and I'm gonna share with you today how to earn $10,000 weekly as a life insurance agent, okay? So one of the things I want you to think through is typically, a lot of insurance agents fail. 92% fail, we're gonna walk through the numbers. I'm talking appointment, I'm talking leads.